This is the final video in our three-part series about using a single crystal X-ray diffractometer for determining the 3D atomic structure of a molecule. This video will introduce screening crystals and data collection. Once the sample is centered, you can screen the crystal to determine if it will diffract X-rays. On the screen menu, you can select the orientations of the goniometer and detector distance. Once you have set these parameters, clicking drive and scan will turn on x-rays and collect one frame or image that rotates the crystal a small amount as it is exposed to the x-rays. The image displays dark regions and light regions. For organometallic and small molecule crystallography, these are typically chosen to be red or white or yellow, as in this example on the screen. For protein crystallography, the standard is a light gray background with dark gray spots. For a good crystal, the spots will be well-defined, separate, and circular. Notice also how the spots seem to have a pattern to them. This is the first gauge of the quality of your crystal. In the center is a bright spot, or dark spot, which is where undifracted x-rays strike the detector and you may also see a vertical shadow, which is the beam stop. The second gauge of crystal quality is measured by determining the potential resolution of the data. This is done by selecting the circle cursor and dragging across your diffraction pattern. The farthest out from the center that you see bright spots will define the limit of your resolution. Drag the circle cursor to this edge and you will see a number. This number is the resolution in angstroms. For a molybdenum source, the resolution should be at least 0.78 angstroms. For protein samples, a resolution of at least three angstroms from a copper source is needed. Smaller numbers indicate better resolution and are desired. The next step is to determine the unit cell of the crystal. The unit cell is the smallest repeating translational unit of the crystal and will help determine how much data need to be collected. The unit cell is determined by collecting data at several angles or positions of the crystal in 3D space. Once the unit cell is determined, the APEX3 software will check if there are published structures in the Cambridge Structural Database that have the same unit cell parameters. If there are matches, it is important to check these structures to see if you are collecting data on a new structure or not. Once the unit cell has been determined, this information can be used to determine the strategy used for collecting data. However, it is good practice to first take an image or video of the crystal that will be used later to determine the size of the crystal and make absorption corrections. The software has an automated algorithm for determining the data collection strategy that is based primarily on the unit cell parameters, the source, the detector distance, and the desired resolution. However, this strategy can also be manually altered by more experienced crystallographers. Both the software and experienced crystallographers aim to develop a strategy for collecting a complete and redundant diffraction data set in as few degrees of rotation as possible. Once the strategy has been determined, the data collection can begin and is typically between 2 to 16 hours for small molecule data collections. For proteins, collection times can exceed 30 hours. You can monitor data collection and examine the individual frames as they are being collected. Once the data collection is complete, the data need to be integrated, refined, and scaled. 
Together, these steps are known as data processing and are beyond the scope of this introductory video series. After the data have been fully processed, they are stored in a SIF file for small molecules and a reflection file for proteins. The SIF file has a .cif file ending and stands for crystallographic information file. The protein reflection file has a .hkl file ending. These files must be submitted when publishing a crystal structure and can be read by structure visualization programs to view the 3D structure. Here is a graphic that you might find in a publication showing examples of a small molecule and protein structure that could result from this experiment. This concludes our three-part video series on using a single crystal X-ray diffractometer for determining the 3D atomic structure of a molecule. We hope that this series helps you understand the data collection process.